Welcome back to Africa Science Focus, the weekly science and development show from SciDevNet. I'm Ogechi Kanyao. In our previous episode, we discussed how artificial intelligence and drones are impacting the various sectors in sub-Saharan Africa. In today's episode of our Science Explained series, we're exploring the use of drones in healthcare in the region. Delivering vaccines and medical supplies to remote areas in sub-Saharan Africa can be a significant challenge. Poor transportation and heavy traffic in cities make it difficult to access these essential supplies. In one study titled, Challenges to the Availability and Affordability of Essential Medicines in African Countries, and published in the National Library of Medicine, researchers found that in Africa, getting medical supplies to where they are needed is a challenge. Heavy traffic and poor infrastructure, including poor road networks, make it hard to transport supplies in cities and especially to remote areas. Drones can be used to overcome this challenge. They can quickly and reliably transport medical supplies, deliver vital supplies, and even bring diagnostic tools to remote areas, helping to bridge the healthcare gap. Our reporter, Halima Asumani, spoke with Fred Senguba, a professor of health policy and systems at Makarere University School of Public Health in Uganda. He shared insights on how drones can bridge the healthcare gap in Africa. So Africa's infrastructure, particularly in terms of health delivery, has is a mix. We can say it's brave. A lot of improvements coming along as we try to connect, especially the remote and rural settings. Uh, but much of it, uh, everywhere you go in Africa, we have a mostly vibrant urban area which has services, but the rural areas are still really uh, yet to catch up. And that remains apparently the biggest challenge in trying to deliver services uh, on the continent. So as we look at the rural setting issues that to do, of course, with the, uh, the infrastructure around facilities, about roads to get there, about technologies that can work, whether through electrical connections and the like. So there are uh, multiple um, constraints that still hold uh, remote health services to be improved. And I think the biggest challenge is how to overcome this. And the innovation, of course, as you indicate, are coming in to try and leapfrog some of these challenges by trying to connect uh, urban centers for referral or for uh, transferring essential um, goods or health services or, or inputs uh, to these areas. And so drones, I would say, are coming particularly to solve uh, this problem uh, in particular areas. And I think is an interesting innovation that uh, we are seeing in uh, some parts of Africa. It's so yet to catch up in other areas, but uh, we are all interested to see how well it can actually uh, help. Organizations like Village Ridge use its drones to deliver medical supplies. In 2018, they partnered with the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo and Gavi to investigate drone-based vaccine delivery in Equatorial province. In this province, many remote and hard-to-reach health facilities have no mobile or internet access, so getting life-saving health products to many communities is a constant challenge. Freddie Nkosi, Village Rich Country Director, explains the impact of drones in this region. For the past uh, 24 years of uh, improving access to health products and services in some of the hardest communities, we eventually realized there were still some communities because of geographical challenges uh, such as mountains, um, um, uh, thick forests, uh, rivers and lakes, uh, not, uh, not even count poor road infrastructures or transport infrastructures in some uh, countries, some communities, we realized there were still communities who could not be rich, who could not receive quality health products when and where they need them because of those geographical natural challenges coupled with poor mm -hmm. infrastructures or inefficient uh, if, uh, transportation systems. And in the context of 
no one is left behind to assure that everyone has equal access uh, to health products and services. Uh, we finally uh, discuss with the government and technical partners and donors to see how we can overcome those geographical natural challenges and efficient, inefficient um, transport systems to reach some of the hardest communities. The reason why we introduce drones who are capable to overcome all the challenges that I mentioned and bring the health products uh, on time and also good quality. Uh, we're talking about health products. What, what health products are these that you're using drones for? When we have been transporting uh, vaccines, all kind of vaccines, including Ebola vaccines, including COVID vaccines, we have been transporting all other uh, health commodities like TB, uh, tablets, malaria, uh, tablets, HIV, uh, tablets, uh, or any other essential medicines. We have been transporting, bringing back life samples because the drugs we are using in DRC uh, can land uh, and also uh, the health workers can open the drone, take the product, but also can send back yeah. the lab samples. So we have been transporting the lab samples. We have been uh, transporting uh, during uh, COVID pandemics. In the midst of COVID, COVID pandemics, we managed to transport personal protective equipment such as gloves, masks, um, uh, gowns um, uh, in the, uh, some of the communities. We have been also transporting uh, medical reports. That's amazing and very interesting to know. And, and what changes? Because, you know, you, you, you outlined a number of products that you're currently transporting using drones. What changes have you been able to see since the adoption and use of drones to deliver these products in these hard-to-reach areas? Well, I'm just uh, looking at the independent uh, evaluation conducted last year by Kinshasa School of Public Health. Uh, the, the results of the evaluation revealed uh, before the introduction of drones, the data collected mm -hmm. in Equatorial province out of nine vaccines or nine traditional vaccines, um, they, uh, we increase we increase vaccine availability from 65% to 98%. And uh, also the number, uh, the percentage of health facilities which, uh, exp uh, which the, the, the percentage of health facilities which uh, needed at least a two-day journey to be reached to transport the vaccines through canon, uh, 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 so uh, from before the, the, the introduction of drugs, there were sixty five percent of health facility who could spend two days, two day trip to go collect the vaccines, but at the moment none mm -hmm. of them, because they can get the product the same day, even within hours. Within hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the percentage mm -hmm. of lab samples uh, uh, arriving on time within two days from the point of collection to the provincial length, the, uh, the percentage uh, uh, increased uh, from 35% before drug introduction to 69%. So at the moment, 69% of lab samples are reaching the provincial lab, uh, uh, provincial lab within two days compared to 35% of, uh, uh, of lab samples before the drone uh, introduction. Harry Chimtengo, a senior medical assistant at Malumbe Health Center in Mangunti District, Malawi, has first-hand experience with drone technology. He shared his story of how drones have improved healthcare access in his community. Okay, so, so Malumbe the Center is one of the health centers in Mangochi District. So we report to Mangochi District at the hospital. We, we are in the southeast zone of Malawi. And uh, we are almost 50, has to be almost 50, 50 kilometers away from the district hospital. 
Yeah, yeah. So we're not far from the district, but actually the roads uh, to, to, to our facility, uh, they're mainly affected during the rain season. So uh, it's more of a challenge during the rain season for the transportation of, of commodities uh, and, and, and even the and even transportation of, of women clients. But you know, child had so well, I want to say that we are almost 50 kilometers away from the district, and it often is so challenging uh, for communities to be delivered at the facility during this period of rainless So we are utilized large on the drone services uh, in requesting uh, commodities as of for vaccines. Uh, some essential medicine uh, to our facility during this period. Not only this period, this period we're talking of rainy season, even uh, uh, when the rain has gone, uh, because our roads are in bad shape. So for us to travel to the juicy hospital to order some medicine, some vaccines, uh, we take much of our time to travel in the but drought, so we always utilize the drone services just to order the medicines uh, and uh, the timeline delivered to us within, I think, if not 12, 15 minutes, the one day is out at the facility. So when you want to travel to the district, many will use motorbike. So for you to get to the district, it's almost two or three hours, of which it will take much of a time. And if it's services, you can't even travel. Rivers are full, you can't travel, so we utilize much on the drone center. And timely deliver of social meds that we have run out of them. There was a time that we ran out of uh, vaccine. It was a campaign period uh, while we were giving a polio vaccine. So we did the run out of the, but we, we were to run out of vaccine. Uh, we had a minimum stop. So the campaign was ongoing. We couldn't travel to the district because it was relative and the rivers were full. And we sent a message to the village, village lake, uh, the district. There were some operators who we always communicate when we want to order the commodities using the drone service. And uh, they, had to process it for last. Uh, it was quick. Uh, and before we ran out of the vaccines, the vaccines were delivered to us and we called the vaccine and they uh, dispatched to the villages that were uh, in need of the vaccine. Yes, so it's one of the uh, scenarios that we had. That was in, that was two years ago when Malawi had registered some for your cases. Another organization, Kenya Flying Labs, uses drones to enhance healthcare access in remote areas in Kenya. Their chief executive officer, Cleopa Otiano, discussed the challenges they face in using this technology. So I think the potential where we sit is huge, and I'm glad that uh, a lot of governments, including ours, is, you know, becoming alive to this fact. And, uh, you know, drones are really one of the very heavily uh, regular, re- re- regulated uh, air fields. Yeah. It's aviation, so it has to meet, you know, standards. Um, so we do understand the, the need for that strict, being strict, but I think the regulations we have need to be user-friendly in terms of, uh, you know, getting to to be able to do especially humanitarian applications such as you know medical deliveries mm-hmm. or you know rural farmers using this technology uh when you have a disaster situation and people need medical help uh or their medical health concerns in in, in remote places like currently we have a lot of flooding in Kenya uh, you know, through the rains that have been uh, going on for a few weeks, mm. uh, you do not have, you know, the luxury of time to be able to request for authorizations to fly that will take a week or or, or so. 
uh, to be able to give response. It's, it's almost instantaneous. You need to be there. So, you know, regulations, and I'm glad in Kenya, uh, our regulations are, uh, are quite improving. Uh, currently, in a, in a day or so, you can get clearance to be able to uh, to fly. Mm-hmm. And, and that really uh, gives us a lot of hope. Um I think other African countries are following suit and uh, very soon we might see, you know, cross-border operations. Um, There are operations uh, in different categories. Uh, The operation that allows medical supplies to be uh, done is is called beyond visual line of sight, where you are flying your drone miles away Mm -hmm. and you're basically relying on your ground control uh, to be able to see the telemetry data and to know the drone's position and to be able to know when the drone arrives. Uh, this framework is not uh, available even in Kenya today, but I'm glad the government does give opportunity. Uh, but I think we're working very hard to uh, you know, get these regulations improved to, to enable some of these services to happen. How is yeah. the regulation like for you in Kenya? So... It's been growing, I would say. Uh, when we started, it was quite difficult. And uh, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's where we need it to be today. Um, but we are working in Kenya today. We've just registered an association called uh, Kwasa, which is, is trying to, you know, work with government to ensure that some of these processes uh, are made uh, easier. But Regulations are tough on drones, uh, basically because, you know, if drones fall in the wrong hands, they could be used for other, uh, uh, you know, bad motives. Yeah. Uh, but um, I think the fact that we do have regulations here and there's a framework to be able to make an application, um, it's, it's, it's improved to an extent that you can get some of these clearances in, 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 in a day or two. Um, to be able to operate, uh, and 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 this, we essentially want to be reduced to hours. So there are systems that are coming up, as I mentioned before, beyond visual line of sight operations will be the ultimate uh, success of our operations, because that is what will will allow us to do our work more effectively. Currently, uh, that framework is not there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the government is is working towards uh, availing it. Uh, currently, the operations that we are doing, uh, we we're using what we call uh, extended uh, visual line of sight, where you have um, observers' positions that we, along the route. Uh, if you're doing a ten kilometer route, you might have two or three observers who are keeping an eye on the drone and 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 communicating on radio. Uh, that they're able to sight that see the drone, so it, it's a challenge, and I think we 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 hope that uh, we can you know transition to BVLOS, and 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 that will be the um, the, the 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 place where we want to be uh, for these kinds of operations. But also one of the shortfall is the regulations currently do not um, recognize. Humanitarian operations, as 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 a case on its on on its own, one of the requirements uh, from us would be to 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 have commercial uh, operations, you know, do, you know, segmented from humanitarian applications, so that you're able to save lives, and 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 you know, do it in an easy way, uh, mm-hmm. provided you fulfill all the requirements by. Uh, the regulators. We go back to village with Freddie and Kosa. Who shared the barriers they encountered in using drones for healthcare? We have so much uh, challenges, mm-hmm. uh, especially um, uh, with the importation of the drone equipment. Um, uh, like we, there are so many processes to import the drone uh, product with, uh, to, to bring drone and uh, drone parts within the uh, within the country and uh, we have also to get uh, an authorization to fly the drones if it's if a tumors from the civil aviation uh, or authority uh, and 
this has changed drastically because in the past when we started, we were only getting one birth uh, authorization. And sometimes the next authorization will not come on time. Before you don't have an authorization, you cannot fly. But now uh, the situation improved uh, a bit from one month authorization to three months. Um, but also, okay, uh, like um, to have uh, trade people uh, within the country to operate to drone, it's not always easy. Reason why we are uh, planning to start a drone academy this year to train a drone pilot uh, locally. Fred Senguba tells us how cumbersome it can be to convince government of the values of drones. So clearly there's going to be a lot of research or oh, just learning from where this is being rolled out. How are the services being experienced, the communities that are receiving them. But interestingly, also the communities around which the drones are flying. The, there was a nice uh, study, I think it was a conference I attended in Belgium, I think two years ago. And the, the drone service was being introduced, must be Kenya. And the communities were so excited that um, the drone was there. So the children wanted to see the drone every day coming into their village. So the reporting of dog bites went up almost 10 times because the kids learned that once you report that dog has, has bitten you, then the drone will come in your village and you get to see this thing fall and the parachute and the red box fully. And so at some point, society is excited about the technology, which may confuse the science. But other than those short-term limitations, which also need to be catered for, you need to understand that when you're introducing it, there are going to be excitement. Excitement may distort some information. But over time, allow it so that it can settle. People get, get used to it flying over. And uh, hopefully birds don't, <laughs> don't prey on it. <laughs> It'll be surprised what... What happens when something flies, some birds may think it's a fellow bird and they may follow it up. But those aside, there is um, a way of trying to see, okay, if it has worked for a year in this place, what has been the logistics about it? What has been the cultural response? What has been the technical response? And uh, what can we therefore tighten to make sure the benefits are improved? and uh, or tighten to make sure that any constraints or side effects are mitigated. That is going to be important. We're also getting policymakers to go to where it's actually working. To see, sometimes seeing is more believing than when we write stories about or to write us or write papers. To see actually what is happening, uh, that can make a big, and also getting testimonies from the health workers on the front line and hopefully the beneficiaries that is also going to be important. So clearly, I see a lot of research, uh, but research that is also more informative because the research currently is almost about marketing, where I think marketing has a role but shouldn't be the, the biggest uh, area of research learning right now. We want to understand the social benefits of it um, other than uh, scale it out tomorrow, that kind of thing. Alongside providing day-to-day -day healthcare services, drones are essential in healthcare emergencies such as outbreaks. Fred spoke to us about this. So I think to the, the main area where drones are going to be very effective is where you need, um, where you have a certain set of inputs. You could say that the medicines or vaccine or blood or those things that you need to deliver or supplies, but you you have, or there is a challenge to have these supplies everywhere. And uh, particularly, we have unique supplies in the health system where you need to refer somebody. So I think the drones are coming to help us to say where, instead of referring someone to make the long distance so that they get, they get a vaccination that is not available in the region, but only available at maybe a referral facility, how can you instead have a service of a drone nature that is at that level where the, where the service is, and then the peripheral can call in and say, look, we really need it now, and they can deliver it. Because frankly, many health service commodities cannot be available everywhere. I think Uganda, and I believe everywhere on, the, on this continent, 
the stockout is really a, a phenomenon that we share in Africa. Literally, stockouts for all essentials. But there are these topmost needs that can save you a life that you do, can't have everywhere. In other words, the peripheral will never have them, but you can fly them there quickly and you can make a difference. And uh, in that situation, whether that is through epidemic response, because some of it may require those kind of interventions, whether it is carrying um, shortages that are needed, especially those are not very heavy commerce to carry, whether it is information on the ground, we have this problem, this sample, and especially when you're testing samples, uh, do you have Ebola, the patient you have admitted, and if it's Ebola, do you want to alert the lab, first of all, to check the blood? How do you take the blood there? Now, you don't want to lose a lot of time, but if you can call and say, we have somebody with these symptoms, we've taken the sample, can you send a drone to pick it? Within probably an hour it is in the lab, within the end of the day, maybe you have results. A system that works like that can actually save um, the world a lot of problems. Cleopa Otiano, tell us what improvements are needed to enable drones to provide more services. I would say um, one of the challenges um, is is actually batteries, uh, because <clears throat> lithium batteries, uh, you know, have a life. Um, a lot of drones we use today depend on that, and you you are not able to cover uh, longer distances because you can only fly for a particular period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is improving uh, by I've seen uh, you know experiments around use of uh, hydrogen fuel cell. I've seen drones that are actually using a petrol powered. I've seen companies such as Cloudline in South Africa developing uh, airships, which are basically balloons filled with helium uh, and and having solar panels on them. And, you know, in the future, hopefully able to uh, charge as they go because they're using solar. Um, So other than that challenge, I think the cost of the technology uh, is, is, is an issue as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's quite costly to get this uh, happening because uh, the, the, the drones are not cheap. So I've also seen a bit of companies, quite a number of companies trying to innovate around that and and, and, and find ways through which, uh, you know, the cost can go down. And I would say, lastly, just uh, capacity so that we have... Uh, you know, local manufacturers in Africa, you know, local drone pilots. Um, so capacity is definitely uh, an area that I would like to see improvement in. Freddie Nkosi shares his thoughts on the future of drones in healthcare. There is bright future for the use of drones. It is a new technology uh, and people need to get uh, use of 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 drones is going to take some time, but also uh, investors, donors, companies uh, to feel more comfortable to invest in the drone technology is going to take some time. But the future is bright because a country like DRC, we cannot say we're going to build all the roads within five years or ten years. It's going to take more time. To build all the roads in the villages and so on and so on, and to improve the trustworthy infrastructure is going to take time. But in the meantime, there is a bright future for the roads, not only in the underserved communities or uh, un- um, the under-resourced communities, even in the well-developed setting, we still need the roads. It's only a matter of time. That's all from us at Africa Science Focus today. If you want to find out more, head to the SciDevNet website. That's www.scidev.net. Today's show was produced by Alice Hurst, with editing by Titi Lopwe Fadari and Ogechi Ekianyao, and reporting by Halima Asumani. I'm Ogechi Ekianyao, and until next time, it's goodbye. Africa Science Focus is produced by SciDevNet and distributed in association with your local radio station.